Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Dwarf Fortress. We are in this episode going to try to improviate on our gem cutting, crafting, uh, and encrusting by trying to figure out the proper setup for a custom work pile or stockpile for this kind of activity. Um, so first of all, we got to figure out where a gem cutter is because we do have one. Yeah, right over here, Jeweler's Workshop. So our jeweler's workshop, let's take a look. I don't know if we've even got any automation set for this at all in this particular game. I think the answer might be no. Okay, it looks like that is indeed the case. Excellent. So first thing we need to do is we wanna start um, cutting our gems. So if we take a look um, at our gem situation. So there is a cut gem category of which we have nothing. And if we filter actually for gem, really? Game. <laughs> rough there it is okay well why wasn't it bringing up gems that's weird huh gems oh you know why i just realized it's because it searches the names of the items over here not the category so if i had searched for jades yeah there you go this shows up all right I guess that that's fine. Anyway, so we have a bunch of rough gems, gems that have been mined out but have not been cut. Um, and first of all, we can make a fairly high quality good simply by cutting these gems. You could sell them. Once they're cut, they're going to be called large gems, large cut gems. And these things be sold for a decent amount of money. But the real money is when you take those gems afterwards and apply them to an object of some kind that you want to sell. Um, the value of things starts to get like multiplied in really crazy ways. We can make extraordinarily valuable uh, mugs. The other thing we're going to do in this episode is set up a, a little bit of a museum, which I often end up putting in my dining hall slash tavern because it guarantees or increases the odds that your citizens see it and give them some good thoughts. But let's go and make a little stockpile right behind here for our gem works, which we'll use shortly. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and do something like this. Actually, I want I do want to make this look like a stockpile. Obviously, you can just have things, you know, sitting on the floor or whatever, but let's do something like this. So we have a special stockpile back here and we'll make sure it can connect up to the the gem works. Excellent. Okay. Um, so the first things first, we do need to cut the gems. We don't need to do anything special for that. We want to set up a job to cut gems. Now, of course, we can click on the workshop, add task. We could put cut gems and repeat it. Now, in previous versions of Dwarf Fortress, uh, cutting gems was actually a little bit awkward because you actually had to set up an individual cut gem job for each type of gem you wanted. Now, this is a generic job. You can just click it. Um, you can still magnifying glass if you want to filter and only cut a specific type of gem. But if I do this, all rough gems in our fort will be cut. Of course, I can put a repeat task on here. Whenever we run out of raw gems, this whole job will be canceled. You'd have to requeue it. The other thing, the thing you may want to do instead is set up a work order over here um, for a job for cut gems, because what's nice about this is if it fails because of insufficient material, it will reset itself, assuming we set up a condition. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to have it cut gems forever. I'm not going to stop when we have a certain amount of large gems. I will probably keep a few rough gems around. I don't know for sure, but on the off chance that some dwarves that have a strange mood want access to rough gems, I will say we're going to do this if it's greater than five. So this will always keep a few gems around. Um, that's going to be okay. And um, the number per day We'll look to like cut a couple of gems per day. Again, I don't want my, I don't want too many dwarves like busy too much on any one particular job unless it's a high priority task or a temporary task. So we can queue up to a maximum of two cut gem jobs per day and only if we've got more than five raw gems around. I mean, technically, I guess if we got six rough gems and it queues up two, we could go down to four, but that's fine. I just want to keep some rough gems around just in case. So that one's fairly straightforward. That's going to be okay. And once that gets processed, we are going to start to get some, some gems up in here. Um, yeah, the next one is going to be a little bit more interesting because it's not something I've actually have to worry about before. Oh, <gasps> Caton, <coughs> excuse me, wants to become a citizen. So this is someone who I believe might have been a uh, permanent resident. They may have been um, accepted in previously as a bard or an eradicator of monsters or something to that effect, but now wants to become a full on citizen. I'm going to say yes. I don't know what Caton is. Are you dwarf? 
dancer. See, this was definitely one of the bards. Um, and I think this person wasn't going to be able to do a lot of miscellaneous tasks, but now they are making a steel bar. I might be wrong. They may have been doing that this whole time. Here you go. Now part of carnal key. This is very satisfying. Well, good for you. Good for you. All right. Aardvark hunting continues, as it always does. There's no checky checky box here. We have a manager, right? Yeah. It's Rimtar. I mean, they're also our mayor. Oh, also, yeah, we've got a few things over here. He's got a mandate for us to make thrones. I think he's also the one who wanted amulets, right? So he wants me to make three thrones. That's fine. I'll, I'll put in a one-shot job for it. I mean, we're going to use these at some point. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's a fairly easy mandate for us to work with. Um, right. He's still not happy about the quality of his rooms. Uh, hopefully, once the engraving is done, it's going to get there. I wonder if I should throw more people on the engraving job. Again, I was trying to sort of limit it so that we could have some specialists, but let's bring it up to like five people that can do this kind of thing. Bum, bum, bum. And then we can do this a little bit faster. And I'm not too worried if it doesn't happen overnight. But yeah, I wonder if I should mine out more of these gems. I don't know. There you go. Okay, there you go. Cut gems is now happening. Good, groovy, brilliant. Now, the pairing to the cut gem job that we want is encrusting. We can encrust things with gems, including ammo. And honestly, I don't know what the deal with encrusting ammo with gems is. I don't know if it makes the ammo better or just more valuable or which what would be the point, but we can we could do that. Um, and there is cut gems, which is our, you know, literally like cut gems, you know, our polished emeralds or whatever. Um, gla cut glass and polished stones all count as gems for the purpose of doing these tasks. You can um, take regular rocks, Oh, there you go. And you can polish them as sort of really cheap gems. Uh, that's why there's these different categories, but we're just going to be looking at the actual cut gems. What we'd like to do is we'd like to encrust finished goods with cut gems. We want, ideally, we'd like our mugs encrusted with cut gems. But here's the thing. If I click on this, I cannot specify what kind of finished goods is going to get encrusted over here. Anything in the finished goods category is going to be valid for this. There's a magnifying glass for a filter, but this filter is only to specify what type of gem to use and what type of um, what type of encrusting we would do. So we want uh, we want it to menace with spikes of pink jade, for example. That's all it would allow us to do. It does not let us choose the source material, which to me is is quite problematic. I mean, it's not the big deal. We could go ahead and encrust everything. But what I'd really like to do is encrust mugs and then sell those for maximum value. But I mean, I guess in a sense, I'm not filtering my finished goods bins, right? When I go, I just say, bring all the finished goods bins up here, and I just sell everything in there. So I guess anything in that category would be okay. But in an effort to try to learnify a few things, we are going to attempt to get this to make mugs specifically. And to do that, we are going to need a special stockpile that is where our mugs are going to be stored. So I'm going to make a stockpile over here. We might need a separate um, shop. I'm going to see. I'm going to make one that's just over here for now, except this. It's going to be custom, and all it's going to accept is under finished goods, we are simply going to accept goblets, which is what the mug category is. However, we also need to make sure that all the materials and stuff are enabled as well, because just turning out goblets but having everything banned means we won't get anything here. So in fact, it probably is a lot easier. Allow all finished goods, and then under type, say none, and then go to goblets over here. So go goblets of any material and any quality will then be allowed in this stockpile. Now, it's not exclusively gonna be here, right? We have goblets that are getting stored in other stockpiles as well. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a, um, a take command over here. Choose a stockpile which the selected stockpile will take items. There we go, if I click this and I click here, so now if we have any mugs in here, it'll get brought over there. And then same thing. Boom, like that. So those are our miscellaneous stockpiles. And if mugs were to get stored there, instead they'll get moved over here, which is going to be great. Now, I don't think I can filter for encrusted, unencrusted. No. Because really all I want is unencrusted mugs to be in here. But this will be fine. We're going to go ahead and do this. Uh, bin storage is in good shape. Excellent. So in theory, and I don't have a... Oh, I do have, right, this mug stockpile over here. I think I'm just going to trash this one. 
Here we go. Because I want all the mugs to be ordered over here. Okay. Now, what we want, if we are to set up a job in here to encrust finished goods with cut gems, what we need to do is we need to set a rule on this workshop so that it only takes from a particular stockpile, right? Like this. So now this stock, this jeweler's workshop can only take from this stockpile. So when it tries to encrust finished goods, the only finished goods it will have access to are the ones in this stockpile over here. However, this is also going to be limiting where we're taking our gems from. Once you set this rule up, once it's got a link, I believe it only takes things from this. I guess we can find out because these jobs should start failing. Oh, merchant be leaving soon. That's fine. I'll put a repeat on here, but this should fail after this current job is done because it shouldn't be able to take anything. Uh, interesting. Oh, I think it just cut this gem. It may have still been sitting in the workshop. So it might be able to do one cycle of this because I think it just cut this and left it in here and then is using it for the next job. Let's see what happens when it finishes this. It is encrusting a rock salt mug, which is great. Now that's a low quality rock salt mug. One of the things we could do with this um, is we could specify, we're only gonna encrust things, that we're gonna only allow mugs in the stockpile that are fairly high quality. And those are the only ones we're gonna encrust. So that is something we could consider doing. Um, core quality versus total quality. I think this includes all encrusting and things like that, as opposed to core quality for our mugs would just be the base mug itself. I think there's also some funky things when you're talking about clothing, because I think thread can have a quality in addition to the cloth quality, in addition to the actual crafted item of clothing quality, which is a whole thing. But I don't think I'll put in a filter for now. I'm going to let this go. And if we look over here, there we go. Needs rough gem in linked stockpile. Okay, that is correct. And you don't have any cut gems either. So that is perfect because now we know for sure this jeweler's workshop is not going to be taking anything from all over the world because it literally cannot. It does not have access to anything else. So <clears throat> we're going to need a dedicated rough gem and cut gem stockpile as well for this to work. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to shrink it down. So this is our mug stockpile. I'm just going to shrink that one down a little bit. Then we're going to make another couple of stockpiles over here. I'll make a three by three. Oops, sorry, I need to be in paint mode, not erase mode. Excellent. And then I'm going to add one more stockpile over here as well. Accept. OK, so this stockpile here, we are going to go for rough gems. So again, I'll allow I guess in this case, all I have to do is for rough gems, allow all. Good. <clears throat> so that's uh, that's this one over here. I'll label these because it'll make it a little easier for us to follow. And then over here, we'll do cut gems only. So custom uh, cut gems of all types. Great. And then over here, we'll rename this one to Mugs. Okay. So now, our Jewelers Workshop, I can add in Rough Gems and Cut Gems. Good. Although we'll have to do the same thing where we take... Uh, stockpile from which selected stockpile will take items. Good. So we're going to take from this one and this one. And then same thing with... The cut gem stockpile we will take from here and we'll take from here. There may have been an easier way to do this, but we'll see. So if I let this run, once things get delivered over here, what should happen is the auto queue of our, because we're using our work orders, the auto queue of our work orders for cutting gems should get requeued and should succeed. Soldering, oh, guild hall for Rangers Guild. Okay. Sure, we'll let you in as well. We need a Ranger's Guild Hall. All right. Let's make sure we've got a door positioned over here. And meeting area. Boom. Accept. Guild Hall. Ranger right here. 
Excellent. And then I guess we're going to need... You're not even smooth yet, so we'll start with that. Oop, I need to turn on keep building, please. I'll do the same. Oh, and then we're out of tables. Although I think we do have an auto job for that. Or do we? I don't know if we do, actually. Maybe I should at this point try to keep 10 tables around at a time. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of wondering if it's time. Let me just double check one more time here. We automate doors all the time, but I think that's it. Oh, then this is the one shot thrown job for the thing, which means we'll have some more, but that's going to be all right. Um, we'll have them make up to five when there's a demand. And if there's less, if there are fewer than 10, do that, which means sometimes we'll end up with 14 kicking around, but that's OK. All right. Because we're going to get more and more guild hall requests and we'll be happy to have the extra tables and chairs, I suppose. OK. So again, the work order for cut gems, because this happens yeah, every day. It's all met. So that should take. There it is. It got auto queued. Probably at the start of the day. It got reset over here. So someone should do this and should now be possible to do it because there are now rough gems over here. And then the gems afterwards will get hauled over here. Okay. You can also specify stockpiles where things um, get given, but we would need something that accepts both cut gems and our encrusted mugs afterwards and things. And I mean, we could, we could plan something like that, but this is going to be okay. All right. Cut gems, good. So now if I put in a job, and if I, I'll do it here, we'll do it through the workshop afterwards, but finish, encrust finished goods with cut gems. If I put this in here and put it on repeat, our jeweler should be able to grab, there you go. It's gonna grab mugs, gonna grab the cut gems, and is gonna keep encrusting mugs with that. Now, sometimes this is something you wanna wait until you've got some very skilled jewelers for, because the quality of the cut gem is huge for value. And this is something where if we're running on sort of classic, we would definitely have a dedicated gem worker. Now, we it might be a good idea for us to make a custom detail here purely for jeweling and have someone who's a specialist and that's all they do. We can have them do both sides, gem cutting and gem setting. Need that repeat to be a little faster. Jeweler. Adequate gem cutter. Tell you what, let's just pick you. You're at the top. Sure, why not? So you are now specialized. All you ever do is this. And yeah, only select to do this. So um, in theory, only this one person, once the uh, the job recycles here. What was their name? The only ask to show up in here. And this is all ask to do other than take time off from time to time. I'm waiting to see someone show up in this. Are, is that you? There you go. You have armor on. Are you part of the military? You must be. Um, yeah. I wonder if I would have wanted a non-military dwarf to do this. Is there an easy way for me to tell from here if they're in the military? Well, I guess I can see if they're armored or not. Maybe we'll do Dotten instead. Oops, only select to do this. Yeah, maybe we'll do Dot. Um, Ost will finish the job. But yeah, let's see. Dotten, Dotten, Dotten. Oh, there's more than one, but it was the herbalist over here. If we look at you, you, oh, you're in a military squad as well. Hmm. Well, it starts to be kind of annoying to see. <laughs> Jabberwacker, right? All right, we'll just leave Dotten on. Fine. Although Ass is still in here doing the job. It clearly takes a little while to, uh, to do each little task. There we go. That's been finished. And now Dotten, in theory, should be coming over to do some encrusting. There we go, carrying it over. Shirt mug, dun dun dun. I suppose I could just take Dotten out of the military. She was part of what crew? The Wires of Packing. Maybe I'll just do that. Dotten, if I... Oh, there we go. I'll replace you this way. And grab uh, Damos. Okay, there. Dotten is no longer in the military. Just because if we're going to invest a bunch of gem cutting skill on someone, it might be nice if they didn't die. Plus, it'll just if we turn on um, training schedules, then they won't be busy doing that sort of thing in the middle. We could take an eye, keep an eye on her from time to time. See if she wants. See, right now she's got unmet need martial training. 
Maybe I should have left her in the military. Oh, well. So, pedestals. That was the other thing we'd started. I'm assuming we've... Yeah, we've made a whole bunch of them. So let's place a few down. Now, we've already got a few artifacts in this planar dining hall, right? We've got our door artifact here. And we've got a silver weapon rack artifact. That's great. But our earrings and things can't just be placed on the ground like this. They're not, they're not a building. So instead, what you do is you get your pedestals or whatever. There's a few different display type items. But, so you see display item over here. We're going to go and place down... I don't want to encroach on the uh, dance floor, so we're going to do this. There you go. So I'm going to put down six of these. Did, did this take over here? I'm not sure that it took that click. There we go. Which can happen if uh, the game's not paused. The Sometimes the UI, like, eats a command. They just, um, they just announced they're adding a new programmer to uh, Dwarf Fortress for the first time ever, which is very exciting. I guess they get the money for it. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, that they might... Um, a few people have expressed this, that... If we can separate it, the graphic loot loop over to the uh, graphic card a little bit more rather than the CPU, we might lose, we might uh, minimize some of these um, little uh, like delays. Okay, so what's annoying about placing these is we have to find them by name and by type. So Ash over here is our, oh, I didn't realize it would resume to it, is indeed an earring. So if we go into our hall, there you go. This pedestal right here, for example, assign new display item. So you got to find, and there's not a category for artifacts, which is kind of annoying. Not going to lie. And maybe, maybe the old version didn't either. And I was just using DF hack to do some filtering. But if we go to earrings, we can find Ash over here. So we'll do this. And what's going to happen? Someone's going to go and grab those artifact earrings and put them on this display case. I think it can technically make them uh, vulnerable to being uh, stolen and things, but ooh, rainbow, whatever that's for. But there we go. Do we have... So the door in this, this is a this is a mechanism, is it? Lignite mechanism called Geek. Geek. So we're also going to put this on a pillar. Right here. So if we search down for mechanisms and find... There it is. Boom. Yeah, we can check this pillar over here. You can actually put multiple things on the same pillar. We could put all for artifacts on one pillar, but it'll look better to me if it's this way. Anyway, lots of dwarves should be passing through here all the time, and therefore they should get good thoughts from noticing this. See, delighted after putting on oh putting on an exceptional item. Ooh, not even seeing it. Another good spot might be in this hallway, actually, because this is basically our main through fair or fair over here. It's not a bad point. Now, if we had masterwork doors here, masterwork levers or mechanisms over here, that actually would probably go a long way to making things quite impressive. And I do feel like in the previous version of Dwarf Fortress, we'd have more masterwork furniture and things because we'd have more people kind of specialized in what they were doing as opposed to these generic jobs that were going around. Yeah, gem cutter and gem setter. Separate jobs, but that's okay. We'll just have one person focus on that. That's going to be okay. But yeah, they are technically separate skills. We could have multiple gem shops, you know, have a bunch of them that are just people cutting, another one that's just people setting, but I think the one's going to be okay. Sure, I'll approve a few more. If we are, if we're getting some people becoming full citizens at some point, that's going to be nice. That's going to be really nice. Um, I still can't set a material for the bins to be filtered here, which is a bit unfortunate because it would make um, the trade screen a little handier. In hindsight, I'm wondering... If the thing to do when I first set up my fortress, right, and I set up my wooden bin job, is maybe to specify a specific material, a specific type of wood. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Or, you, I mean, you can make metal bins as well. You can also make rock pots, which act as bins, I believe. And again, we could specify a specific mint, uh, material for all of our bins in our fortress. And then might make it a little easier to sort things, but meh. Okay, if we take a look, uh, maybe the easiest thing to do is here, actually. We'll look at goblets. Hmm, no, I guess we don't see the value on this. I think this is an encrusted one. I think that, that single dash, that's the quality of the mug. I eat not very good, but I believe the brackets here show that it's been encrusted. Yeah, well-crafted rock salt mug. It is encrusted with radiant cut pink jades. 
And we know the base value of these shit mugs are pretty low. So this one's at 54. We find another mug to compare to. Uh, there we go. This one here, again, hasn't been it's it hasn't been improved in its low quality. 14. So you can see the valuation went up quite a bit, and I believe that the value of this mug is more than the value of the mug plus the value of the gem. But all of it's pretty low because our, our skills are just not there because we're not specializing on a task. And I've been trying to trust the system as much as possible, um, but I'm wondering, you know, it might not be a stupid, stupid idea to have a stone... Is it stone carving? No, there we go. Stone crafting. This is our mug making skill. It might not be a terrible idea for us to have a specialization for this to get maximum value mugs as much as possible. Um, see, Fath over here is already considered to be a stone crafter. They have a few other jobs going on, but I could go ahead and turn some of those off. Wow, they've got a few things going on. Oh, maybe I'll skip you. Soddle over here. Let's do this and have you be specialized in just mug making. And I think if we're going to make it so that only these people do it, I think we're going to want a few. Sarvish as well. Okay, three people only doing stone crafting, which is basically just mugs. Although we don't, I mean, do we even have multiple crafting stations? Do we really need that many? We actually might not. You know what? I'm going to back off a little bit on this. Um, skilled's good. Okay, I'm going to turn it off for Sarvesh. Just the two skilled. So you guys make mugs, hopefully make them higher quality. And yeah, hopefully our um, our gem worker over here will get better and better at both both aspects of the job. And again, we might want to, we might want, yeah, to split the job in two, have one person who's just cutting, one person who's just setting. But I think it's probably okay for us to just have the, the one specialist do both sides. Going to be all right. Anyway, hopefully we can get a bunch more master work stuff done. And it, th that's the thing. It doesn't take long to train people up to do like master work crafts, but they basically, you, you just have to make them do just the one thing and not be scattered about. But yeah, we've got our mechanism here as well. This should give us even more good thoughts, but more importantly, perhaps, at least for me, is it takes it out of the list. Now, when we move finished goods bins to the trade depot, they will not include those artifacts. And we'll just have to make sure to put, when we get new artifacts, put those on display. I love it. It looks like someone put a, a sock on the pedestal over here. Look at that. It's owned by Regoth the Child. Yeah, both socks. Um, I mean, I'm sure they just took it off because it got worn, but I like the th the, to think that that child thought their socks were amazing. And was like, I want to put them in the museum. And the rest of the wars, you know, can I just leave these on here? Are these sorted by distance in any way? No. Because I could go and look for... Well, I guess socks is in its own category, is it? It'd be under armor. Actually, is it not including socks in here? Oh no, I think it only includes things that are in a stockpile. These aren't in a stockpile. I could forbid them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just forbid these. So they're not technically on the pedestal, but no dwarf can move these socks anymore. There we go. I love it. That's what the War Force was about. It's all emergent storytelling. Because it doesn't actually have a storyteller, right? Here's the thing that people, a lot of people ask about, like, the comparison between Dwarf Fortress and RimWorld. And the thing with RimWorld is that, I mean, it's a little smaller scale. So you, you get to know your individuals maybe a little bit more. Um, but it's got a storyteller that's trying to generate events for you. Dwarf Fortress does not have a storyteller. Everything that happens is because of the world simulation. Things are happening over here. We've got, you know, we're, we're near, um, see, we're at war with these guys. Uh, yeah, this must be a goblin group with a little G over here, although it's a little annoying that you can't quite tell otherwise. There's, we're near a goblin civilization that we're at war with, and so presumably at some point they will send some actual sieges and raids to us. Um, but it's not going to be because the storyteller decided it needed excitement. It's because the dwarven, the goblin civilization um, has assembled an army, has decided it wants to go raiding, and has decided to hit my site specifically. And that's it. It's not, yeah. And everything that happens in the game is just as part of the simulation rather than story told events, which is freaking aardvarks, man, <laughs> which is I mean, that's, it's good and bad, right? The RimWorld storytelling system is great, but there is a, an extra layer of authenticity in Dwarf Fortress because it wasn't it wasn't something just saying, yeah, you know what? We're due for a blah, so let's do it. 
it it just happened because it made sense in the world folks thanks a lot for watching another episode and i'm gonna see you guys next time bye bye